Now, there's some um, technicals about this uh, week's uh, Torah portion. There's some technicals that um, hopefully in this is going to be the beginners. This is like the beginners level. So this is more of, more or less an overview of what it contains because we have to be able to rightly assess and answer and understand this matter because this is the instruction for the real world as well as in the Kal Kidan, in the covenant there's a protection in this world and in the world to come which is very crucial um, something we was going to mention probably hopefully go into more detail when we get up to that portion of this reading first of all let's just set this up um, this is the uh, RSS number 18 and it's called Mish Patin, right? And in the Amharic, we know it as Shev Ot, right? And it can be understood as the, the judgments, quote, the judgments or ordinances. Ordinance, actually. You see, King James would make it plural. King James often makes it plural when actually singular. We learn this by studying the Metaf Kedus and the Orit of His Majesty, the Metaf Kedus. Now, the commandments are very important. Now, the commandments were actually contained in the previous, the previous week's portion. And the previous week's portion is Yotor. And we touched on it briefly in the, in the introduction to this right here. And, um, we said we wanted to go into more of a detail on the Ten Commands. Now, this portion begins in um, from from 21st to the 24th, approximately from the 21st to the 24th. In fact, right here we have Mish 14. It's the 18th weekly Torah portion of the Orit. The Orit, we know it as the Orit, the Orit. But it's called Torah, and it's a parasha or a portion. Bamarinya, we say Kufa. Kufa means a portion, as the Book of Jubilees is known as the Metafe Kufale. Kufale means, it's translated as the Book of Divisions, but the Book of Portions. So we're going to see a very important connection as we go further in our studies. But this is a basic beginner's level discipleship course or or lectures or overview. Sometimes we touch on more intermediate as well as some of the more advanced matters because it's important, we think, to give a good vision of it, but cannot go into some of the details on some of the so-called higher levels until we touch on some of the basics, the basic foundation, the basic groundation. Um, so this is the 18th portion, right? And this is our annual Hebraic and and the Judaic cycle of the Torah readings, the readings, and it's the sixth, this is the sixth one in the book of Exodus, in the Orit Ve'ad, or the Torah of the coming out, the Torah of the Exodus. It constitutes Exodus 21 and 1 to 24 and 18, and we as Hebrews and black Jews and Ethiopian Hebrews, we... Um, we uh, read this, you know, who are in the diaspora, in the 18th Sabbath or Senbet. And this is the Senbet or the Sabbath, the seventh day after the Simchat Torah or the Fish the Orit, the joy of Jah's law, the joy of the Orit, the Torah. Now, generally this is in February. Now, this parasha, this kufl, this portion, it sets out some of the laws, or basically the principles, the principles of Fasika, or of the Passover. And Hebrews also read part of it, as well as Orthodox and religious Jews, they read part of this parasha, this kufl, namely Exodus 22, to 20, 22, verse 24, to chapter 23, verse 19, as the initial, or the first Torah reading, for the second intermediate day, that's known as the Hol Ha Maod, 
Now, there are seven days, you know, the unleavened bread days. So the second of those days, that portion, Exodus 22, verse 24 to Exodus 23, verse 19, is read now. We black Jews, black Hebrews, or Ethiopian Hebrews, Afro-Israelites, also read the first part of the Parsha, or the portion that's known as Ki, Ki Tissa, which is Exodus chapter 30, verses 11 to verse 16, regarding the half shekel, the half shekel. And, and the shekel is, let's call it the shekel, the dollar was the ancient Hebraic dollar, or in Ethiopic and Ethiopian terms, you know that as the bur, the bur, you understand? And it's the silver currency, the silver currency. So this also touches on economics. So we as a people, the, the, the benefits in studying the Torah and the Orit, and the application of it, once it is, it is, it is known and understood, it leads us to that freedom and nationhood that we so long have sought, you understand, in this land that is not ours, you understand, and in preparation for the promised land because there is another coming out, and, and this is the very prophetic coming out that we're speaking about. Um, I think it was Rock Tafari, I and I, Salamta, Heal Up, Rock Tafari, and the other brothers and sisters who regularly watch these videos and, and comment and even critique if necessary. You understand? Because iron sharp and iron. But Rock Tafari, you made a, in the Whitney Houston video, this is the day, the Sabbath day, when they are going to have a, a so-called funeral for her. And it's, it's not the Hebraic or Judaic custom to have funerals on the Sabbath. So that further shows a kind of a, a spiritual Egypt or Egyptian, this modern so-called spiritual Egyptian bondage. And, and so you must understand it not just racially, but you need to understand it spiritually. This is why the groundation here is very important for us in this 18th sabbatical portion known as Mishpatim. Now, the half shekel is, is the key tessa, um, Exodus 30, 11 to 16, verse 16. The half shekel, which is the head tax, or the aras tax, for each of the rases, as the maftir, or some say I think it's the evening Torah reading, on the special Sabbath, the Shabbat shekalim, or the Sabbath of the shekel, the Sabbath of, of, of the silver currency, the silver currency, which is the silver, which often falls or occurs on the same Sabbath as the Parsha Mishpat. 14, as it does in this year. So this is really, this, this Shabbat, this Mish 14 is the Shabbat Shekalim for the years 2012, 2013, 2015, 2017, 2018. Now there's something very, very interesting in those years. Now connect this with the 2012 as well. This particular sabbatical portion, which is Mish 14, which is called what? is interpreted as a judgment, you understand, the judgment. So we see that in this year, Mishpatim and Shekel, uh, Shabbat Shekalim is same day in 13, not in 14. Not in 14, which is very, very interesting because when we get to 14, it'll be the Ethiopic 2007. So we need to, you know, we need to comprehend what the, what God's time, what Jah's time really is, according to the Enochian or the Ethiopian calendar or calendars. Because just like the Mayans, there are more than one calendar. And from these different calendars, both the, the luni or the lunar and the solar or charting the heavens. And we went to uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 14, to show that that's Jah's um, time. He shows this by the signs in the heavens. So the, so the connection with this, we're not talking about so-called um, astrology, what sign are you so forth. No, we're talking about Jah's signs. What are his signs? And, what does, and what's the link with his word? And, and those can be very key to our halakha or our walk, our movement, our akahed, 
our progress forward in coming out. So we speak about coming out of Babylon, but Jah word, you understand, and the knowledge of the son of Jah, the, the Bain Ha Elohim, our black Lord and Savior, Shua Ha Moshiach, that is the key. So it begins with the Imnet. It begins with that, we can say, faith. But faith without works is dead. So the study now provides us the instructions to get the structure to build on that true foundation. And we're going to make the His Majesty Hala Selassie link in this teaching to prove that this is what he expected and he expects. He expected of the former generation, but he expects of this generation. So he has sent ones and ones like I and I out forward. You have sent to to seek to prepare the people, you understand, and for I and I to be prepared because we are living in perilous times. These are crucial times, my brothers and sisters. We will overcome it with the spiritual power. You understand, with the spiritual power. So the years right here are very interesting. So this is just an overview of Mishpat 14. Now, some say that's the Hebrew for laws. Some say that's the Hebrew for laws. We see that they have it as laws, right? Um, and some translations and shoftim, shoftim, basically is the judges, or what's known, or who's known as the Elohim. And Elohim is a Hebraic word for gods, but with the ha, with the definite article in, in Hebrew, ha, Elohim, it means the gods, but with Yahweh, those the gods is speaking of the God power or the or the seven. You know what I'm saying? And when we speak about the seven, um, we can see the seven even manifest with the kingdoms. We have we have the kingdoms that we can see. You know what I'm saying? Like the the plasma, the protoplasm, should we say, like the mineral kingdom, the animal kingdom, the human kingdom, but then there's also the angelic kingdoms. You understand? And the order, the, the seraphim, you know, the cherubim, and then we get to, like, the throne of God. You see what I'm saying? Then we get to the very throne of God or the heavens of God. So when we speak about the word heaven and heavens in Scripture, it's very significant. So when we say the kingdom of heaven in the Ethiopic, it's actually the kingdom of the heavens. So the link with the sevens is important. So we also see the sevens in the, the holy days that we're to observe. And this is what we're going to touch on in this portion, Mish 14. So it's often translated as laws, laws, Mish, Mish 14, right? But it also can mean judgments. Now, Bamarinya in the Amharic is this word, Sharat. And if you'll recall, um, beloved ones, we had addressed, uh, sought to address that subject matter of Shur'at, you understand, as order. When we speak about law, there's law and order. So the word doesn't really mean law, but it means order in the sense of an ordinance. And in this portion, it's going to touch on some of what, what is known as the so-called religious ordinance, or really our true spirituality. This is our true spirituality. And it's not just something that we do, but it's linked with this prophetic time. So there is the way to see that this is his way. This is the king's highway. Because the royal law, which is that pure law, addressing vis-a-vis -vis the Ten Commandments, is also known in the scripture in the book of James as the royal law, the law of liberty. And liberty, biblically speaking, is the true freedom. You understand? Not just, not just looking for the outer freedom, but get the inner freedom of your spirit, of your heart and your mind. And that creates that psychic and that spiritual firewall. And that firewall now is impervious to all these so-called um, Illuminati, secret society, all these other weapons of mass destruction and, and MK Ultra and these kind of, these kind of psycho babbles. You see, this spiritual power, that's the key the true spiritual power. And so the King of Kings already show I and I, you know, already demonstrate that to I and I. So with that being said, 
let's let's just touch on 21. Let's go to 21. So on Acts 21. So we still have to touch on the commandments, but all of these all these are connected, even though in in one sabbatical uh, Shabbat um, week or portion, right? Um, at the seven, seven days, we have one portion that we read and study. Now, some may stop at the particular number of the verse. Some sometimes even I and I will go forward, go over, get a context of it, then go 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 over the text again, you know, to try to really digest it and get it in, you know, our heart and mind. Because committing the word to our heart is is memorization, yes, but memorization of the spirit, not just the letter of the law. But it's the spirit of the law. And something very amazing, you know, comes about. And brothers and sisters, if you've ever really memorized even even a song or a certain area of scripture, even a verse, and can recall that in your heart and your mind. And and, and, and that word is is, is 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 a word of power. You know, it's like a hekal. In ancient it was called a hekal. Remember Muse, our brother, the author of of these five books called the Orit or Torah, he was learned in all the wisdom of the Egypts. You see, both Egypt, Lower Egypt and Upper Egypt, the Tob, the Tobia or Ethiopia. You understand? And that's where Median, that's the connection of Median and even Moses' Ethiopian wife. There's a connection right there. So we can see the the connection with the Ethiopic code that we speak so often of. Because the Ethiopic code is, is significant. You understand? It's very significant and hopefully we'll be able to teach more on this and even demonstrate. Because demonstrations are already happening. You understand? But demonstrate in a way where one can connect it now with the scriptures and with with his word. But um his Majesty says, well let's first touch on this. His Majesty says something that's very interesting. Let's just get this um so we can document this. This is the gospel of this is the gospel of him. Right? This is the gospel of him, right? Um some of y'all have ordered a copy. I'd like to get some feed forward on it. This is this book one. Because we thought, well what basic information, you know, in bringing this message forward. And, and, and redeeming even the name of our Godfather, the King of Kings, and the true gospel, bearing witness to the true gospel and the true good news of His Majesty in His Christ, in Jesus Christos of the Word. Because His Majesty says some very, some very profound things concerning the right faith. See, we call it in Ethiopia, they say the Orthodox faith. And Orthodox is a Greek is is a, is a Greek mind understanding of what we know as the rit or rit a hymenote, the ritu a hymenote, which means the correct faith, the correct faith, and that word correct is interesting, and I, I think it's in this book right here we we, we touch on the word um, rit it and the ritu, the ritu, and those who are into ancient. Um, Egypt should be familiar with it. Well, actually, it's in the next book. It's in Ethiopic. It's in the book Ethiopic where we touch on the language and the linguistic connection um, with ancient, so-called ancient Egypt and the mysteries. It's in this book that we talk about the the um, the ritu, the ritu, and that words link with the the true faith or the, the the right faith or the correct faith, the the it the ritua hymenos. And so as Matsy gives us some of our basic foundation and groundation, and this is why we contained um certain um words where Matsy spoke particularly excuse me, on the faith. And one of the high points is the Lutheran hour. I'm sure many of you all saw the video, and we give thanks to the brothers and sisters and others that were part of the editing and even have re-edited that particular audio, you understand, in order to disseminate 
our divine heritage and the teaching of his majesty. Well, in this particular in interview, and, you know, we've read it, but this is like scripture, you know, because it points to the word of scripture as well as give a demonstration in our time to the truism of the scripture. And that right there, my brothers and sisters and mothers, is an encouragement. You know, it's a real encouragement. But His Majesty has asked a question about what would he advise? You know, what would he advise to, like, young people? And compared to the ancient of days, I and I, and I and I all, is young people. Even if it's so much that we are young people um, in spirit as far as the spiritual maturity that we should have, you know? But when when one is willing, you understand, when one is willing, one seek him, one will find him. You understand? Because he is faithful. You understand? Even if others and we may fall short from time to time, he is faithful. You know? And that's the love of a child. It's not that we love him first, but that he loved us. You know, and how he how he gave his only begotten. You understand? And 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 th and there's a key here. You understand? Because this prophecy concerning Yeshua HaMoshiach, Jesus Christos, has been since even ancient Egyptian times. That's the reality of this. So when we look at the true teachings in ancient Egypt, it is actually a prophecy, a foretelling. You understand? Of Christ, of Yeshua of his majesty, of I and I, of this end of this world age and the beginning of a new. And this year, 2012, is like a bridge year. Very important. It's a bridge year. Now, um, right here, his majesty is asked, your imperial majesty, what advice would you give a person who is considering the claims of Christ? One who is considering the claims. That's, that's where... That's where faith begins. You know, once hear this message, but then they, you know, they think about it, and they say, okay, I hear what he's saying, and, you know, it's interesting. I don't know if it's true or not. One is considering the claims, not of I, not of me, but the claims of I and I, Black Lord and Savior, of Yes Christos, and also the claims of the King of Kings. But first, the Son is first, because he sent the Son you understand? Because no one can get to the Father unless it's through the Son. And this is the real key of true Rastafari. You understand? And of the true Ethiopian Hebrew people. When they understand the, the, the theology, for lack of a better word, you could have taught brothers, brothers and sisters. You understand? The true theology or the teaching, the word, because Theo means God in the Greek and logos means the study of, or really from the word, the logic. So logic is not just logic, but logic is something that is studied. You know what I'm saying? One must be studious to this, you see, because the new birth actually begins with our mental, you understand, know as well as spiritual, with like a heart and mind ascent. And, and the word is the gateway. You see, the word is the key. You know what I'm saying? And this word, as it's written, they say the letter of the law is death, but the spirit giveth life. So as one takes in the letter of the word, you know, the word condemns us in our natural or our so-called fallen state before our regeneration, before we begin to be born again. You know, that's why some folks don't like to read the Bible because... They read certain things that, um, you know, the good portion, the blessing portion, everyone loves that. But the so-called fire and brimstone and the judgment portion and, and where the scripture becomes a mirror to us and we begin to see that through our so-called humanness or fallen humanness, devoid of spiritual strength in and through Jesus Christos, we can do nothing. 
it's glad to see says so in his autobiography he says may those who our kith and kin who rise up in the future um, um make note of the word that you are you have spoken without me you can do nothing. That's what Christ said to Ayana. His Majesty verified that word. Because Abba could do nothing less, nothing different, but verify the one and the word of his metaphysical son, of Yeshua HaMashiach. So what is left for I and I to do? You know, people say, well, if that's so, why do we have to do anything? Well, it's very clear. You understand? We have to receive. There's a condition. We have to receive. and We have to grow up into him in all things. And the Torah is a foundation. You understand? The scriptures and the law, because we as Beta Israel is supposed to be the light for the Gentiles. Look at the world. Does the world have true light? It has a false light that they want to call Illuminati. But they don't have the true Burhan. And because they don't have Burhan, they don't have Salam. But on some level, that's their fault, yes. But for us and who we are, brothers and sisters, as Rastafari, as Ethiopian Hebrews, that's also our fault. You understand? But yet, it is not too late. Here's the good news. This is the good news. Sima, Shema. Listen to His Majesty answer this question. What advice would you give a person who is considering the claims of Christ, perhaps for the first time? His Majesty says, I would tell a person who was considering the claim of Christ. What is that claim? The claim is even the same today to even a lot of the OJs or the other Jews, even some of the black Jews. You understand? We share Torah, but some are, have, have, have different um, opinions um, concerning Jesus Christ or Yeshua HaMoshiach. Some of our black Jews, brothers and sisters, receive Christ. Some say it's because of our Judeo-Christian background already, both here and even in the Promised Land, the Motherland, Africa, West Coast and even East Coast. But some reject that. Just like among the OJs, the other Jews, the white Jews, some accept Christ. There are a few. They call them Jews for Jesus, but many don't. They say that he could not be Moshi. He could not be Moshiach. You understand? Because they speculated that if he is Moshiach, based on their understanding, then he would fulfill this, fulfill that, and this would happen and that would happen. And, and, and it's a very interesting reasoning, brothers and sisters. It, it is a very interesting reasoning. But that's not the gospel. What's the good news is what His Majesty teaches us right here. And this is on page 143 of what we call the gospel of Him. You understand? So you can go to our website, order, copy, so forth, and so on. So here His Majesty says that, he would tell a person who was considering the claim of Christ for the first time that it is necessary to have faith. It is necessary to have, what, what is the word faith in, in the Afro-Shemitic, in the Ethiopic, as well as the Hebraic, it's that word Amen. Now the Egyptians also knew of the word Amen, and their priests had, had constructed a, a theological ex, ex, explication of, of, of the Amen. And not to sum up everything, but basically many scholars say that the Amen was the hidden one. Was the hidden one. Isaiah also spoke about the, about the hidden one. You are a God, an Elohim, who hideth himself. You understand? That's why Revelation speaks about the unveiling. You understand? He said he would be with I and I always. You understand? So if we don't see him physically, that does not mean he's not with us. That means do we see him spiritually? Do we see him psychically? You understand? And are we, are we with eyes wide open, you understand, seeing reality, are we still blind to that? You see? So that's the key right there now. His Majesty says, faith in the Almighty. So faith in the Almighty. You can note that. His Majesty right here is teaching us. This is almost a catechism. This will be the first catechism for I and I. 
the teaching of his majesty because majesty starts us off by saying that one who's considering the claim is Yeshua truly the Mashiach? Is he the Moshiach? Many have said yes. Many Hebrews, you understand, from and Jews and Israelites, those scattered, including the Ethiopian eunuch in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, verse 37. He said, Awol, yes, and he received. And in the Hebrew, even the English, what he says, but the Hebrew is a part of our Shema. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8. Eight. It's the second part of our Shema, chapter 8, verse 37. Because he says, Ani, Ani, Ma'amin, I have faith. You understand? Ki, Yeshua Ha Moshiach, that Jesus, Jesus the Messiah, Bain uh, Ha Elohim, who? That he is the Son of God or the Bain Ha Elohim. Now that right there, you know, he already knew the Shema, and Shema Yisrael, because he's a Hebrew. Ethiopia was his nationality as being an Afro Shemite or Afro Israelite or a so called black Jew, you understand, and black Hebrew. Yet he was able now to recognize that truly. Jesus, Yeshua, our black Lord and Savior, fulfill that. And this is where Christianity or Christina continued to grow. You understand? This is how it continued to grow because there was already that, that, that expectation of the Messiah, even from Solomon and Sheba's time. We have this in, in the Queen of Sheba and only son Minulik. We have this in that particular document, a very vital document. You see, because we don't know these things, we're not conscious, you understand, of those spirit of that spiritual those spiritual levels because we don't know those things. So even if those things manifest in front of us, we would either be blind to it or we would assume that it's something else. But once we become aware, once the word illuminates upon us, once we have that in the treasure of our heart and our mind. Then when we see manifestation or sign, we can be wise to the sign. So truly, education is the key, you understand, and the knowledge of the Son of God. So he says that it's necessary to have love. So it's necessary to have faith. It's necessary to have love. But he didn't mention love before faith, but faith before love, the amen before love, and that it is necessary to conduct oneself in a manner that we have been taught to do in the Bible. So now this begs the question. If one doesn't know the Bible, then how would they conduct themselves in the manner that we are taught to do in the Bible? So that means when one is considering those claims, in other words, coming to the Moshiach, coming to Christos, coming to Christ, right? The, the faith already begins to manifest if they are seeking it. You understand? It's, it's like the centurion. We can point to many examples in the scripture of those who came to him who, 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 didn't, who wasn't doubting that he is whom they had heard because they only had heard from other people based on what they had heard. You understand? There was their spirit. Their spiritual sense was attuned enough that when they heard, you understand, faith began to develop. And what is faith? Admitting as true. You know, when you hear some things, you don't really know all about it, but something tells you that it's, it's, there's some truth to it, but you're not going to say, okay, yes, I know, I'm going to seek those who say they know or seek those who have this information so I can verify it, you understand, as best as I can for myself. So what is our source of verification if not the Bible, if not the Metzhav Kedus? You see... And we're touching on this because where His Majesty leads this, you know, where he goes forward with this is very interesting. He says, I would also advise him to seek the secular knowledge. So His Majesty, I and I are August, King of Kings, and, and Godfather, Abba Kedus, Kedus Abba Tachi. He says that we also must have, first he said the foundation, the spiritual foundation. And then he says we must also have secular knowledge, the seclora. You understand? The nouveau ordo seclorum. The seclorum is the world. We need to understand what's going on. We cannot be ignorant. 
You understand? This is how the bondage continues because ones are kept ignorant or are willingly ignorant because they are having too much fun in the pleasure of unrighteousness to want to be, want to, to seek to become conscious. You understand? So they remain asleep. I would also advise him to seek the secular knowledge or the worldly knowledge, for the more one knows, the more he realizes the need for a prime mover. The more one knows, Yovis, then one recognizes the need for a prime mover. So that's what we say, atheism, so-called atheism, in its Western Gentile forms especially, is foolishness. It's really foolishness because all one knows, one thinks that there is not a prime mover, there is not a governor over all these things, because they were left to their own devices. Oh, yo. You see? So it goes on to say the need for a creator, a creator who is good, and the need for salvation, and also for a peaceful life upon earth. Now, although this speech and these words and the scripture may have one set of words, you must also understand that since logic is a code, you see? So let me give you a, 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 an, an example. When it matches the need, the necessity for a creator, a creator who is good. That word good, we touched on told and how Tobia is the original name of Ethiopia, but Tov means good. You understand? And there's Tobaya, the good Yah, the good I am, Tov, you know? And the need for salvation, salvation, med Medan, you know, Medan, which is also connected with Adonai, the Hebraic Adonai, but Medan, like as in Medhani or Medhane Alem, the savior of the world, that is medicine, that is healing, but also it is preservation. You understand the preservation. You see, because when you see what goes on in this world, when ones get all caught up, you understand, and they become pawns for Satan because they have they have forsaken spiritual power. You understand, a forsaken Christ. Christ protection and, and, and therefore the, the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of God, the power of the truth. You know what I'm saying? You recognize the need for salvation and also a peaceful life on earth. Many of us, I think all of us, really have not experienced what one day of a peaceful life on earth is. You know what I'm saying? I mean, just look at the world situation. But this does not mean it is an impossibility. I mean, look at all the things people said was impossible, whether among men and people or or among nature or in creation. You know what I'm saying? So one should be careful to say it's impossible based on the little bit of knowledge they have because the more knowledge they get, they'll recognize there is a need for a prime mover, mover and then they'll begin to seek who is their creator. You understand? Check out the creation. Study creation. Life, even, even the sciences and those who have been studying animals and the creatures, is very, very interesting, brothers and sisters. You know what I mean? And, and, and that's what we talk about when we talk about Rastafari. Rastafari is natural, the natural man. You understand? Yes, it's natural, it's creational, but really it's because of the praise of the creator. And we see his, the prime movers sign in even the creation. You understand? And when we come to the level of seeing that he is I and I creator, you understand, and how wonderfully he has made us, then our potential, the potential really opens up for us. Remember, this is a it's a spirituality, you understand? Not just religion. You see, we're not just talking about religion here. Even though religion in the Western Gentile sense is, is, is different, it's 180 degrees different than the living faith or hymenote in the Ethiopic, in the Hebraic sense. So we need to understand that and we need to learn some more about that. And His Majesty says, I will also tell him to learn and to think for himself. 
the ways he would serve the Lord, the ways he would serve Adonai. See, this, His Majesty's advice right here in the Lutheran speech is, is, is words that I, I should actually read every day, but not to become so-called fanatical. I should read very often, and we all should be reminded and, and take, take verse by verse and phrase by phrase and really comprehend you know what I'm saying? In our mind's eye, what this word means, receive it with love. In this thought and in this undertaking, what is that? In this what? Thought. What is the word for, for the senbet? It says to re, what? Remember. We can say that's a, that's a word in the juicive or the imperative sense of the sawaso or of the grammar. And in other words, it's, a, it's more of a commandment. Hasit. You know what I'm saying? Think about the Senbet day. His Majesty says what here? In this thought. You see? So the thought is the product of what? The thinking. And so we say the Sabbath, keeping the Sabbath, is the first level of, of discipleship. When one really is able to keep the Senbet or to think, you know what I'm saying, about the Senbet. To think, to keep it, yet to said, to keep it holy. By spending time in the Holy Word, by spending time in the praise and, and, and the thinking on the creation. That's what the Sabbath, you know, the, the, the sabbatical word basically says it refers to the creator who created heaven and earth and the seas and the creation. But then when you think about the creator who created the creation and you think about the polluters and the destroyers of the earth who are destroying creation, then you recognize the need for mishpatim and for shor'at. Shor'at is an order, you understand? But shor'at is really a new world order, but it's also linked to the word judgment. You understand? Judgments or, or judgments against God's law. So for us, spiritually, we must be in the right let me say, frame of mind or consciousness. This is why the Sabbath and the and the feast of Yahweh, the Moedim, are very important, especially the seven Moedim. Because what we notice over the past couple of years, since we really start to pay more diligent attention to it, many key events have occurred. And, and many of these events, we see these events to be beyond, beyond man, you know, doing it, or man doing it intentionally. But these are the fingerprints of the Almighty. Some signs occurred actually on these particular days, even Ethiopian New Year, September 11th. Ethiopian New Year, how about that? For thousands of years. And many other key events. And I think it's necessary for us to really keep these events holy because that's part of the covenant. And he says he will protect his people, you understand, and those who become as his people. In other words, it keeps us out of harm's way if we're doing, you understand, and serving Adonai correctly and, and celebrating him and celebrating those holy days correctly. You understand, don't be caught, in other words, don't be caught out there and like taken away with the flood, but be within the sabbatical mind state, which is a rest state, which is like the Noah state, being in Noah's ark, you understand, of consciousness first and foremost. You see, the mind, the spirit of the mind is, and the heart is, is what carries you now to the higher level. It's not the body. You understand? The body must be raised, but you raise the body by raising the spiritual consciousness, you understand, in God's word. And having God's word in your heart and your mind as that firewall of protection, as well as a purification as you study it, as you think about it, you know, as you meditate on it. You might not understand it all at the sitting, but you'll go about your business and then it'll, it'll come to you. You understand, as you're reasoning with others and doing more study, you'll get your confirmation. You know, this is why I suggest to all the brothers and sisters and disciples to take good notes. This, this is class. This is teaching. You always say, not just from I and I, but from wherever you are getting that information. If you're sitting down, reasoning, a thought comes to you, and you put it 
together and you start to see, you know, it's like the Almighty is revealing things to us. Yovas, and for each one of us to make that spiritual contact to the God and Father of our Black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christus, is very, very important. We're to have those confirmation that we know this word is true. Not that we make believe, but we come to that point where our consciousness and our awareness rises to that, to that, for lack of a better word, dimension. You understand that dimension? Some speak about the fourth and the fifth dimension. There's a connection. You know, there's a connection with all this. Now, here His Majesty says, so in this thought and in this undertaking of his, he will inevitably find the way of serving his fellow men. So when you seek, how would you best with your God-given gifts and talents and skills and, and, and inspiration, um, how would you best serve Adonai, Ekeziavi? How would you best serve the King of Kings and his Christ? What What, what is it that the Almighty has given you the gifts and the calling of God are without repentance. But now when you recognize those gifts and callings and you seek repentance, then, then God blesses you even more. And when we say blessing, we're not just talking about physical blessing or substance. People have substance abuse, materialism. You understand? First, seek ye the kingdom of God, of God. And all of these other things will be added. You understand? And this is what we see. Shabbat to Shabbat, Sendet to Sendet, Yovas, and even giving I and I self, you understand, in the, in, in the free will of the King of Kings and His Christ to bring these teachings forward. It even helps I and I. For real. Even though I and I would still be studying these things because I just love it. But in bringing it forward and trying to answer certain questions and sometimes not having the answer or the fullness of the answer and meditating and praying on it, 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 it just strengthens I and I. So this is the way I have thought, you know, saying, to serve Adonai, to serve Jah, as well as serve my fellow brothers and sisters, you understand, know, and, and the mothers in the King of Kings and His Christ. So His Majesty's word here, I and I have taken to heart, he says, for his faith would then be manifest by his conduct, by his akahe, by how he conducts himself. I and I, and I say I and I is so-called perfect, but I and I is seeking it. You understand? And we know that practice makes perfect. You understand? So the instructions help us with the true structure. You understand? This true structure. So he says, if Christians behave in this way. If Christians, those who claim to be of Christ, Christian, behave in this way, if we dedicate, or as Aina Rastafari say, livicate ourselves to this fundamental task, then we will have a peaceful world. So this is even a judgment that those who claim to be Christians have not dedicated themselves to this, we he says, fundamental this is fundamental, but they put this, you understand, behind them, the, the weightier matters of the law, they put behind them and just deal with little petty issues you see Christians running around speaking about, but not in this fullness of the word of the B-I-B-L-E. So you know there is a judgment for that. You understand, there's an app for that, there's a judgment for that. He goes on to say, and we will be assured of not transgressing against the will and the commandment of God. Now, His Majesty also talks about the Ten Commands. And there's something interesting he says on the, um, on the Ten Commands. Let's see if we can get that portion. He speaks from the Bible here as well. Oh, right here. Here's what His Majesty says. He's asked a question, as a mature Christian, have you a special word for young people in these days? And this is I and I's special word for young people in 2012 who might be viewing this. From page 153 of I and I book, uh, Gospel of Him, of Halas Elias I. And we're reading the Lutheran 
um, I think 68 interview, and here His Majesty asks, as a mature Christian, have you a special word for the young people of these days, these last days, but these days, His Imperial Majesty Haile Selassie I, on this occasion, I address all those within our empire. Now, when Zmanchi says that, he's not just talking about the borders of what they call Ethiopia on the map. He's talking about wherever water touches land, you'll find Ethiopians there. And speaking to us, Afro-Americans or African-Americans and African in the Caribbean and in South Central America, he's speaking to us, the once lost but now found Beta Israel, when he says, within our empire. Because the throne of that empire is the throne of David. This is what we mean about our African Zion, Africa, we are Zion. He says, our Christianity, our Christina, Eastern so-called Orthodox or Oriental churches as opposed to the so-called Roman church, and even this day, the Vatican is elevating 22 cardinals, even one from this New York area named Dolan. Now, that's significant. And remember, they chose this particular Shabbat, while others, lost sheep, Negroes, are going out to this funeral of Whitney Houston, a funeral on the Shabbat day. That seems to have some Egyptian, you know, significance, proving what we're saying about spiritual Egypt. Yovis, but let I and I digress. Let I make I and I move forward. He says, our... Christianity is not restricted to a given church. You see, our Christianity is not restricted to a given church, you know. And I stress above all that we do not wish to make distinctions. It wasn't a time to judge. He's just making a, it's a speaking principle. He says, my advice to all is to fulfill, and here the translation says the Ten Commandments. To do what? To fulfill. Now, many tell you that nobody can fulfill the Ten Commandments, or if they speak it a little more correctly, nobody could, you know what I'm saying? But in Jesus Christos, in Yeshua HaMoshiach, who is the Moshiach, you know what I'm saying? In his spirit and in his truth, following his testimony and his example and keeping his word, we are able, you know what I'm saying, by and by, you know what I'm saying, to fulfill, you know what I'm saying, the Ten Commandments in and through the Moshiach. You are aware of the contents of the Ten Commandments and can elaborate on it. Whenever I read that, I'm like, i got to do a teaching on the so-called Ten Commandments based on this, this answer of his Imperial Majesty Kadamawi Haila Selassie. He says, you are aware of the contents of the Ten Commandments and can elaborate. That means go into more detail on it. If the nation for which I am the emperor or the Negusa Negest and Rastafari and the Ethiopian Hebrews are still a nation, but, but it's now global, you understand, because the kingdom of Christ takes over, you understand, Revelation points this out. So that's the stone that's not cut by human hands. He says, if the nation for which I am the Negusa Negest or emperor, king of kings, literally, follows and accepts this. So he says, the nation for which he is king of kings follows and accepts what? The Ten Commandments. Is this one reason why Babylon is babbling on about the Ten Commandments even today? And is this significant in one of the signs of the time in this end time of Babylon and judgment? We're in a mishpotim. You understand? Know that's, that's the connection right there. He says, since this is also what I accept and follow. So the king of kings, of course, God and Christ cannot do, be unfaithful to himself. He says, this is what I accept. You understand? Know I, Kabbalah, you understand? Know Tekabalhu. You understand? Know Tekabalhu. Tekabalhu. And follow it. I also believe, or our main have true and faithful witness that our country is not only historically Christian. So it's not just to be Christian in the historical Ethiopia, the old church. No, no, no. That's not the teacher of his majesty, but also actively, actively Christian, both active, you understand, in growing up to him, in, in our personal study, our personal, we can call it 
ivotion, having that ivotion time, having that meditation time, having that spiritual time, having that reading time, having that word time, so that if each of us spends that quality time head resting with Yah, then as by and by we come together, you understand, we can see the spiritual unity of the community. You see, so each of us must take that responsibility and keeping or uh, remembering the senbet and to keep it set apart, to keep it kedus. That's the test commandment right there. If one was to ask, well, how would I begin? I would say, remember the senbet day. Because when you get into that particular word or command, it connects it with he who created the heavens and, and the earth and the sea and that which is therein. And it says to take a rest, you understand, from one's um, occupational labor and recognize the prime mover. And in that recognition of him, it's called a rest for us. How is that so? Because while we physically rest from the physical labors that we may labor the other six days of the week and we spiritually focus and head rest and heart rest on him he strengthens us spiritually you understand and when we are spiritually and, and, and soulfully or psychologically strengthened then we are bodily strengthened and our life is preserved and health is maintained this is why the Ethiopic greeting or the Ethiopian say Tena Aina Yisterling, you understand? Health be given. In the Hebrew, we would say Shalom. Shalom, Ma Shalom Ka, Ma Shalom Mech, is basically asking about one's health. And so when we speak of health from an Ethiopic and a Hebrew and a scriptural point of view, we're not just speaking about outer health or just physical health. We're speaking about spiritual health because spiritual health will make us psychologically healthy. And if we are spiritually and psychologically healthy, then we become physically healthy. You see, so the world has it backward. The world is, is, is just on a body consciousness, on a substance abuse, you understand, on, on the physical world level, what they can see and, and, and touch but have lost sight of the spirit, and many of them have lost sight of their life. You understand? Because they're too focused on the things, and the things don't give life, and they are not giving the creator, our blameless creator, his praise. And though it may seem to some to be a light and an easy thing, there's a, there's a great consequence, you know, because if you don't know that you are spirit at the core, then you don't know yourself. You, you know, and, and, and many are blind, but it's, it's, it's our role and responsibility to proclaim that glorious good news, that glorious gospel, you understand, and that all would hear, and then the end will come. And as you said before, we, we know when the end is going to come. I can't give you a time or a day, but I can tell you this, that the end will come suddenly. This is what his words say, suddenly. That's why I want to heal up Rock Tafari, the comments you made about Jeremiah 4 and 22. Because the next verse is speaking of what I and I have been having, having a vision of, that when we really look at the world situation, and, and, and even us, you know, we as a people, as a lost sheep, is, is a mystery. Because I, I, I and I is... is is, is one of the is one of the rams, you know, not just lamb, but one of the rams on that level, or one of the one of the unbesses on that sort of level. But you know, I'm part of the pride. I'm part of the flock, you know, just like you all are, you know, who are of I and I in spirit and in truth. So I can't really say if you look at certain points of view of where we're at as so-called lost sheep, black folks. It looks real sad. It looks real bad. It looks, you know, but looks can be deceiving. You have to get to the spiritual. You have to rise to the spiritual level, brothers and sisters. And on that spiritual level, you know, I'm more positive 
because if you if you don't have that focus, you know, you will be in some states of depression, and many are. And that's what we say, give give Jah the glory, you know, give Jah the glory, learn His word, you understand, and and try to try to practice, you know, what you can, try to do. He says that he who does it will know of who the teaching is, you know. So if one seeks to do it, you know, words prove it. Prove him, brothers and sisters. Prove prove this for yourself. Don't just be lie. So his majesty says right here about the elaboration on the Ten Commandments. And I know I was a, a, a little moment on this right there, but it, it, it's a very appropriate and applicable, I think, with this portion that we're at right now of, of the scriptures, as well as I and I, who are, who are studying together in our fellowship and using these means and media, you know, saying, to communicate, you know, because I, I, I know, you know, suddenly, you know, when we look at what's going on in the Babylonian system, this message could be one of the last messages because the Internet is, is, might not be on. We don't know these, these sort of things, you understand? And when you, when you see how humanity has, has been... Um, uh, degraded and deceived and deluded and see some of the and many of the prophetical signs here and there you understand? it's impossible to say it's going to happen on this day at that time and I'll, and I'll work like that but he did say you will tell when it's close but he already told us what we should be focused on and, 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 and keeping the Sabbath and like Sabbath keepers you know, Rabbi Wentworth Arthur Matthews of the Sabbath Keeper community, the oldest of the black Jews, the Ethiopian Hebrews, and we as African American, and this is going back to the 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 twenties, you understand, know but we already know the roots of it is much deeper amongst Ainai. So this this is nothing that is new to Ainai. You begin to learn Torah and and, and and, and the Holy Spirit opens up, and you're led of the Holy Spirit, and it opens up your consciousness on these things. You begin to really see. It, it's almost like you know it in your spirit, but as you learn it, it opens up that awareness to you. And I and I cannot go through every aspect when I'm being being illuminated by the Word. You know, but what we can do is teach some of the basic principles, teach what we can, and mainly try to encourage ones, you understand, to learn it for themselves, as His Majesty even so, so aptly, His Majesty so aptly, so accurately actually said it. He says, he says that um, one should, he said he would, he would also tell him to learn and to think for himself the ways he would serve the Lord. He would serve our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach. He would serve Adonai. How will I serve him? This is, this is crucial because we're in a stage where we must seek to come together as a community, but we must build that foundation in our hearts and our minds by, by coming into that covenant, each of us, you understand? With the God and Father of Jesus Christos. And if we are in that covenant, then to grow, you understand, to grow, we begin with that faith and that love and, and conducting ourselves as the Bible teaches us. And if we don't know the scriptures, we must begin to learn the scriptures. So, with all that being said, we have this up here. Now, the first words, what are the first words of this um of this Torah portion. What's the first words of this Torah portion? I I know I think we went a little bit above time or we can keep going. I think we have a little more time to keep going in this. The first words are now these are the judgments and we're at Exodus Exodus um twenty one and one. So let's put this right here. We're at Exodus 21 and 1. And it's going to use this word right here, judgment. You understand? So it says, now these are the judgments. 
which thou shalt set before them. Now, this is why we wanted to do this um, um, the portion on the law, which is actually so. Before we move forward in this portion, it is first of all important for us to get a foundation. Now, this is why we read from His Majesty the Lutheran interview, where His Majesty gives us very Hebraic and and truly um, messianic or Chris, Christian advice. You understand? Which points us to the very foundation where He says concerning to fulfill the Ten Commandments. Now, why the Ten Commandments? I spoke about this earlier, how the Ten, ten are the Sifr, the Sifrot, the, the, the so-called Kabbalah or Kabbalistic um, uh, sh chakras or seats are ten, according to the Hebraic um, metaphysics, or some might even say cosmology, or the or, or the tree of life. You understand? So there are ten major uh, sifarot. You understand? Bamarinyan Mharga Sefer or Sifra is an encampment. If you recall in the previous portion, it speaks of how, how Israel had camped. You understand? And had encamped. And it uses the Ethiopic root of the word um, sifarot. You understand? Or the Sefer. And also we have the book of Mesafins, which connects with the princes. You understand? The princes, but in the, in the Hebrew, it's known as Shoftim, which is called the book of Judges. Bamarinya, it's the uh, um, Metafe and Mesafins, or the book of the Mesafins, those who Sefer. So we have the Seferot. You understand, which also links as we go to the Hindu Kush or that early Ethiopic civilization that became known later on as India. They have the chakras, so we have these these these, these seats of 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 some say it's energy. You understand these energetic seats. You understand these are attributes which are digested, appropriate appropriated and assimilated. It's like when the Almighty says, when we say we have faith or our main, and we learn, well, what is our main? Our main is the true and the faithful witness. So our main deals with truth. You understand? And faith is what? When you have faith in something, you have like confidence or admittance in something. You understand? When you, it doesn't mean that you Per, per se at that point may know, but you have enough knowledge, you understand, to have that sure, that true, you understand, so you know enough truth, you understand, it's like we know enough truth of the Almighty to know that there is the Almighty, you know, we know enough, we're not going to say we know everything, but we're learning, but in that state of mind, he answers anything that you ask that you need to know. You understand? He answers. Sometimes he may not answer you at the moment or when you ask because sometimes you're not ready at that moment. But but have faith. You understand? You understand? Um, or we say um, tamen. You understand? Tamenu. Yeah, tamenu. You understand? Tamen. Like we say, aras tamen. You know, have confidence. Have fidelity. You know? So, um... This particular portion that we're going into speaking on the judgment. Now, before we can properly move forward, we're going to have to look at, once again, chapters um, 18 and 19. Now, in, in, in strict orthodoxy, the portion that would be read would be chapter 21, 22, 23, 24. Now, hopefully you all have read from last week's Torah portion of 17th, or you call it Yitro, Yotor, or in the English, Jethro, um, Moses' Ethiopian uh, Hebrew father-in-law. You have gone over this, so you have a basic idea. So what we're going to do is kind of try to focus. We've spent some time on chapter 18. 
because chapter 18 basically says that this one of I and I, even this work that we do, it's not just one of I and I. I and I can even feel similar to what Moses might have felt. You understand? But then the advice given is to prepare others. This is where we have the New Testament sense of making disciples of all nations. So we have a link in chapter 18 of Exodus. But now as we get into um, chapter 19, it speaks about how they encamped. They encamped where? At the, at the, at the, at the foot of the mount, but it's called, um, how do they use the, the language? They encamped at the, at the foot of the mount. Um, Yahweh speaks about eagle's wings. And then he says, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, keep that, keep that word agreement, the al kidan, then ye, and it's speaking not just to one, but speaking to all of I and I, it says, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure to me above all people. For all the earth is mine. Now this is interesting because often we teach to the lost and, and, and concern the lost sheep is that this also proves that the Israelites, you understand, are this black people. But they're not obeying his word. So contrary and vis-a-vis, -vis, they are the lowest of all people and carry that peculiar byword, nigger or negro byword, and other key significance, other key signs that proves that the lost sheep of the Beta Israel are so-called uh, black people, you understand, in the Mer lost sheep in the Americas and the Caribbean since circa 1530 A.D. Now, here as we go through this, there is um, in dispensation.